Oh, okay. Sure. If you could just speak up. So you're it works with the Public Housing Authority and you're talking about online communities and housing complexes. Is that right? public housing? Yeah, so I'm just interested. Perfect. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Please. Great. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm the communications director for Seattle Housing Authority. We use Facebook and Twitter. Um, the woman who runs all that is right next to me. <laughs> um, and I'm just, we're just here to kind of learn from what you guys are doing and see what Great. other ideas we can pick up. Um, I'm Laura. I'm a technical communications specialist at Seattle Housing Authority, so we're pleased to. And I'm responsible for our social media presence. And try to figure out how to serve all of our residents as a whole, but also as individual communities. And um, I guess our biggest question would be about connectivity and uh, serving low-income, really diverse populations, and how many of them are online, and how they get online, and you know what are their user habits. Mm -hmm. That's something that we really struggle with trying to figure out because there's not a lot of data about it. Mm -hmm. So if anybody has any information about that? That'd be great. great. Go ahead. My name is Tim Erickson. I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. Steve and Corinne with the Democracy Network. I'm Corinne Gruning. I'm the outreach coordinator for um, eDemocracy.org, and I live in the Powder Park, Park neighborhood of Minneapolis. <laughs> um, there's probably just a few of you who knows what that's all about. And my top question is I just want to learn more about all that you all do and see how it can help the work that we do. Dar. I'm Dara Simon, I come on I live in the Yesler um, Terrace neighborhood, and I'm also part of Raja for Africa. So, and we serve East African, not just East African, we serve all the mm -hmm. community that lives in its and central district. My name is Nuruddin Ali, I work in Raja for Africa. We work most of them in Yesler Terrace, and at Seattle and King County. So, we just came here today to learn. I'll be, yeah. Great. Thank you, guys. 
I'm Tom Rideout from uh, Spearfish Innovation. I'm actually here with Every Voice Engaged, and my background is using uh, social platforms to generate ideas and make decisions in businesses and see what happened to the communities there. I got very excited about the civic applications of that and thought that with my interaction with Every Voice Engaged, there was a great opportunity with some of the things they were doing. Mm -hmm. My name is Steve Dodds. I'm from Scotts Valley, California. Uh, I'm working with an organization called Every Voice Engage Foundation. Uh, we do interactive uh, constituent engagement online. And so I'm here to learn about the different online platforms and then uh, understand how to better incorporate our online gaming into helping neighbors collaborate around ideas in terms of what will make their neighborhood great, uh, how, to, how to prioritize projects that they'd like to accomplish. So uh, learning about the platforms and trying to determine how we can help those platforms be more engaging by giving, uh, adding additional activities. Great. Boy, that's a big list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Al Voss. I work for everybody's favorite local county government. Don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> for King County on their web development and open data team yeah, let's see, I live in West Seattle, home of the world famous and much loved West Seattle blog. And <coughs> my best question is probably, how can your county government do more on the web but bore you less? <laughs> That's great. I'm Ken Gilderim. Uh, primarily tonight I represent the Rainier Beach Regional Coalition, and we've got two uh, two separate kind of parallel projects going on. One called Top Southeast Seattle Freedom Net, where we have a group of youth who work as citizen journalists using Twitter to post headlines and writing articles on blog and creating some uh, media libraries for this other neighborhood. And the other is the Virginia Beach Coalition itself. Uh, we're trying to find a way of weaving together the information from all the other online resources and offline resources that need to be getting online so that the community can see itself Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, please. Uh, my name is Anamia Bertoni. I run the South Park Information and Resource Center. Um, well, I am here to learn to <laughs> how to make uh, more people inclusive in our business. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you want me to make an example that... Yes, please, if you're in South Park, yes, yes, please. Uh, a lady who speaks Spanish came to my office saying, I have to uh, find a foster family for my, my pets. Mm -hmm. And we put the announcement in the list there, and in five minutes, when she was in my office, she was getting the phone calls from the neighbor <laughs> saying, I want the... The Chihuahua I want the <laughs> Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I'm Judy DeBarros and I'm with Neighbor to Neighbor, which is a small grants program at the Seattle Foundation. And we made grants in South Seattle, um, White Center, and Kent. And we funded some of the projects yeah, in, in the room here. Um, and I'm, I want to learn how we can support our grantees more in um, using uh, social media and blogs and to communicate. Particularly in Kent, there's a big need in Kent to, it's, it's a really rapidly growing community and there's like very little connecting. And the other big question I have is how to connect the non-geographical communities. Like we have a lot of ethnic communities here in Seattle that like, you know, are not necessarily members of all of these blogs, even mm -hmm. though they are there. Mm -hmm. But how can different the, the different ethnic groups and language <coughs> groups also use this to connect among their communities? Great, great. Hi, I'm Janice Foster Richardson. I'm here for the NCD conference, and uh, I, I work with a national network uh, called Grassroots Grantmakers, and we're a network of primarily funders who are doing the work like um, Judy just with neighbor to neighbor and uh, really care about resourcing and supporting the work of what everyday people do together in their communities and so I'm just really excited to be here and have this 
opportunity to and you have a big question burning yeah. question all right I just want to hear more. excellent hi i'm from swallow forest davis i work in communications at puget sound clean air agency and we have a really big project going on uh, in tacoma and pierce county where we are violating the federal air quality standard for uh, fine particulates in the type of i know but so with the the pollution source uh, for that is wood smoke. So we have this effort to clean up air down there and only a little bit of money, of course, <laughs> for educating people about the problem and the potential solutions that the community came up with. And so I'm here to learn about how to educate um, those that we can, can't really afford to translate everything, and, but to reach the, the more diverse communities the Tacoma and the Pierce County area, um, well, and everybody else too who's, who's online, because we and only have three years to do it. <laughs> and the wood smoke is actually from homes mostly? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, people who burn wood to keep it We had a very dynamic conversation in our Longfellow neighborhood forum about pit fires in, in the yards. It's in the city you can have fires and basically the people posting saying, you know, I have asthma, I'm trapped in my house during these times of the year when, and, you know, and other people saying, you know, fires are part of man's primordial, you know, history. <laughs> and uh, wow, yeah, quite a dialogue. That's yes. So, be, yes. So, but it's something that we need yes, to talk about. And if absolutely. Neighbors, neighbors can talk to each other, and the one who's asthmatic mm -hmm. and, you know, the reverse, and the one who's just yep. my right, you know. Have some learning, yeah. And it's not just government telling them. Yep. Uh, my name is Tori Dixon. I'm from 21 Progress. I currently reside in uh, Bacon Hall. And I guess my big question uh, is how to not only inform uh, community, you know, local communities, but also to get communities to actually go out and do something or adapt. Take action. Could, could you mention what 21 Progress is just briefly for folks oh, who don't know? Right. Um, so uh, what 21 Progress does is what we're looking to do is to cultivate leadership uh, among, among young people and immigrant communities. Um, and yeah. Great. Please. Uh, I'm Colin Shannon Garvey. Uh, I live in uh, Montlake, not to be confused with Montlake Terrace. Montlake is a neighborhood of about 1,100 homes and a small business district south of the University of Washington. Uh, <clears throat> we have a, a community club. Uh, and anyone who lives in Montlake or, done, or has business in Montlake or uh, is, has an interest in Montlake uh, can uh, join our forum. And we have a Yahoo forum uh, and we have a website um, and uh, we have an independent blogger and we put out a monthly newsletter uh, of which I am the editor. Um, I am here because I got uh, a very odd email from somebody called Steve in Minneapolis <laughs> who wanted to sign up for the forum. And uh, as moderator, or one of the moderators of the forum, I said, why do you want to do this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so instead of actually, he replied, uh, Done specifically about why he wanted mm -hmm. to be on the forum, mm -hmm. I said, what are you going to post on our mm -hmm. forum, you know? Mm -hmm. But he said, please come to this meeting, so yep. I'm here. Yep, uh, yep. Uh, and so can we all vote at the end about whether Steve gets to join? Yeah. <laughs> no, this is, this, this is not democratic. <laughs> hey, this is great. Could you give us a story uh, from the forum that you think really resonates, uh, you know? For... Well, a very interesting story on the forum, uh, was uh, I think two, three days ago, and it's still running rampant in the okay. forum, that uh, someone of a particular um, political persuasion uh, had a sign in his front yard. And I would um, confidently state that he is in the minority group uh, of the mm -hmm. Montlake uh, people. <clears throat> and uh, someone uh, sprayed his Lexus, his white Lexus, with purple paint. And so his post to the forum was that uh, it was politically motivated. And there was a huge response from the members of the forum that um, not necessarily so. And 
and he um, went to the press. Uh, so there was a story published. Uh, he was on um, interviewed uh, on a television program, a news program in Seattle, um, and there's been a big backlash uh. for this uh, because there is no proof uh -huh. of what the motivation was. And one interesting theory was, <clears throat> uh, you may or may not know, but there is a university uh, team uh, called the Dogs, <laughs> and they are a um, football team, and they are purple. <laughs> and so uh, it may have been in retaliation from another university that's on the east side of the state. Could be anything, but the <laughs> speculation is uh -huh. going on. That's a gr uh, so that's, great example. That, that's it. We also have an independent blogger mm -hmm. called the Montlaker, and uh, his name is Reiner. And um, I talked to him uh, about <coughs> about melding his blog onto our website, which is a WordPress website, which has been rather neglected. And so um, he said he wanted to remain independent. Uh, and I said, that's fine, but then I talked to him recently and he said, I'm getting tired of doing this. So <laughs> <laughs> it may not last much longer. If you have 1,100 households and 900 members, that is amazing. We have, yeah, we that have, is amazing. We have 1,100 households and 946. It varies day yeah. to day. Yeah. But, but it's a Yahoo blog, mm -hmm. so uh, you can choose not to get any emails. Mm -hmm. You can choose to get all the daily emails in one packet, and you can uh, choose to get emails as they come in. Um, and uh, so we have, of, of the people who receive emails, it's a roughly half of mm -hmm. that uh, 946. Uh, but uh, we use the, uh, we use the uh, forum to publish the, uh, the monthly newsletter which goes on the website and then you get it as a PDF file. And that goes to everybody, because I can send it to everybody. That's excellent. Yeah. Thank so you that's so fine. much. That's excellent. Fine. All right, Sean. And we'll, we'll, we'll. I'm Sean Keane. Uh, I'm here from Here Inc., a startup that has just recently graduated from the Fledge Conscious Company Incubator. Um, and it all started, actually, when I set up a social network for my apartment building in Brooklyn, New York, uh, about 300 residents. and. Um, we came to be a stronger community from it. I'm trying to think of perhaps the most important like example that I can think of was one summer um, uh, during the afternoon on a Thursday, uh, half of the building's doors had a notice on them from the fire department declaring you have to vacate by 9 p.m. The doors will be locked and sealed. Um, and there's a lot of young people living there, a lot of people traveling, foreigners, and for the most part, there's just great confusion and panic. Um, people were, were calling around, they're posting on the board, they're saying we're, we're evicted. This is like 150 people suddenly trying to figure out where they're going to sleep that night. And so we actually were able to use this network that we had set up. I mean, because we were connected, it wasn't just a network. People were friends on Facebook. They, they had potlucks with each other. They had their phone numbers. Um, so they could text each other. Um, people were using Twitter hashtags and what have you. It's so many ways to connect, and we worked at it a way of like understanding what was happening, and we used this forum to um, to actually get the official messages through from the Department of uh, Emergency Management, from the Red Cross, who was providing busing to shelters, um, from the management company, who was uh, explaining what was going on. So um, because we were connected, we were stronger and safer um, in this this episode, which could so, have been so there had been a fire in one of the apartments, which then caused part of the building to be closed. Or? No, it was that um, it was realized that. Half of the, uh, the half of the apartments uh, weren't up to fire code. Oh, wow! Okay. In a way that the fire department thought was okay, perilous to life. Which you know, whatever um, they gave us very short notice though, so it could have been a real panic. But with mm -hmm. technology, we kind of came together, so that was great. Very powerful. And I guess the question yeah. is, um, boy, how can we all work together with all these divergent systems? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm with a company. We have, you know, we're going to go out there and try and. Uh, capture bulletin board messages that people are using on paper bulletin boards and coffee shops and in apartment buildings and, and on telephone poles and put them up online and share them on mobile devices on the web. This is one channel, you know, mm -hmm. there's every block, there's, um, 
there's next door and I'm so mm -hmm. curious how we can make a consortium mm -hmm. connecting together because that's, that's the whole point. Great. That's why we start these. We can things. talk more about that. Excellent. Uh, hi. Um, hi everybody. I'm Lois Mogg. I'm with uh, Seattle Department of Neighborhoods, so I'm a city employee here. I also live in Fremont. Um, our department has Twitter, a blog, Facebook, several listservs. In fact, a story it would be our pea patch listserv, which is very popular, and <laughs> I see some nods, uh, that uh, you have free plants, they're gone like that. I have extra compost, I um, need help on how to get rid of a weed, and there's constant communication on the listserv. So it, it, it Any, any idea how big the membership is on? So it's, so it's like a gardener's list? There's about 4,000. Okay, let's put that on the slide. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> so, yep. you know, not everybody is mm -hmm. a gardener, but mm -hmm. they get so much out of the discussion. That, there we uh, go. This is very good. a layer of the onion. That's yeah. what, you know, <laughs> dug into the garden. Okay, very and good. And of course, yeah, my please. interest um, or question is, well, number one, our, we're about community engagement, so we're interested in knowing what's going on out there so that we can connect better with our neighborhoods and also how we can do that in a mm -hmm. better way, especially when we've got city information we want to provide or need information from our community, how do we connect the dots? Excellent. David, please. Hey everybody. Um, so I'm Dave Keyes. I uh, direct community technology programs for the city of Seattle. Um, for those folks who are here for the National Coalition on Dialogue and Deliberation, I'll actually be uh, presenting on Saturday with folks from YMCA talking about that future sound off new civic engagement project, so plug for coming down for that. Um, uh, we work alongside the citywide web team in the Seattle channel, so our work is around technology literacy access and fostering online civic engagement. Um, we do some grants for that as well. Um, and so I think a piece of that we've been working on developing, how do we best support neighborhoods in um, developing and maintaining, sustaining their online presence. So this person that's created a website that then doesn't do it anymore. We've seen that about a thousand million mm -hmm. times. Um, <laughs> so the question is how to keep that going, keep it exciting, that's, that's an interest of mine. Um, as well as how do we support multilingual platforms and how do we also make connections for the knowledge base and the projects that are happening that cuts across neighborhoods. So if I'm doing something that cuts across a neighborhood, how can I um, reach out to other neighborhoods and neighbors to participate um, in that, um, and how do we also um, talk about, build a knowledge base, so I learned how to troubleshoot with the city government, or how to apply, or how to find free tools. Um, how can I share that among others as well? So those are kind of a few of my interests. Um, in Seattle, I live in the Columbia City neighborhood, um, so I'm part of a bunch of different neighborhood mm -hmm. lists, including this um, the Beacon Lister, um here, um, some stuff in the Southeast, and the Columbia Citizens Wiki. That's right, I should have the wiki up. That's one example of a, a local wiki. Um, so we're, we're, we're actually doing perfect for time, but we would, we'll just cruise through the last row here, and so please. I'm Beryl Fernandez, and um, I straddle uh, the north end of Seattle, which is where I live, and um, as well, well, live and work and play as well as the south end of Seattle, where I do a lot of volunteer work with uh, immigrant and refugee communities. Uh, Beacon Hill right here, the El Centro de la Raza, uh, Rainier Beach High School. In the north end, I have worked with uh, neighborhood planning groups like the Wedgwood Planning Council, Community Council, uh, the uh, Seattle Greenways, and uh, Pete Patch also. And the it's, it's so impressive how they are able to uh, coalesce, um, get, get the, uh, round up the technical expertise within the neighborhood, neighborhoods themselves, and then do incredible things with it, organizing, also organizing across neighborhoods, for example, with Seattle Greenways. In the south end where I'm here, the challenge is how, we don't need to use the exact same tools. So my question is, and I'd love to leave you, in fact, I will not leave here today, <laughs> unless I come away with, with some nuggets, um, strategies from different people, mm -hmm. and we'll put them all together on what's worked in um, 
traditionally underserved communities. Mm -hmm. How can we bring them even more into well, communicating with each other, communicating with you know, everybody else? Mm -hmm. So, um, and and it, it takes several things. I think it's first of all, just the organizing part of it, mm -hmm. and then it's the tools part that can facilitate um, disseminating information. And You've just introduced Corinne Bruning. Oh, this right. is this is very good. So thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm Marina Gordon. I'm community manager for Every Block, and Stephen, you did a great job introducing what the site is about, and a lot of the topics that you had in your example topics, I noticed, were mm -hmm. actually taken from Every Block, so thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's a site where you can sign up, if you're in Seattle, you can sign up for any neighborhood or, or variety of neighborhoods that you would like to follow, and you'll get information, but you can also share information with your neighbors or organizations can share information and you're not you're not um, you're not uh, confined to just posting in the neighborhoods that you follow you can post to any neighborhood that is applicable in the city um, I live in Wallingford and it, it was interesting to see you do the slide first about the editor driven mm -hmm. websites because I used to do a site called my Wallingford which is how I came to know every block and I would get this email every day and I you know go through this data it was before we had the community layer on there. Mm -hmm. And it you know it was somewhat interesting, but it wasn't until I left my Wallingford that it actually became much more useful to me because I wasn't so plugged in every single day. And I wasn't getting that avalanche of press releases from from the city and <laughs> from other folks. Um, and so that's what I tell people is that it's a great way in a short amount of time to get a lot of information about your neighborhood and also to share information. And mm -hmm. just one example of what, you know, the, Sean here mentioned, you know, kind of piecing together all these different forms of communication and platforms to, to come up with, with a good ending. Um, we had a, we get a lot of lost pets posted on the site, and this is in every city that we're in. And um, because it's a local topic, it's an urgent topic, and it's a way that one person can get information to a lot of people quickly, a lot more easily than going out and posting on every uh, on every poll in the, in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So we had somebody post that they that they'd lost a dog, and or a cat, and and there were a number of people said, oh, I'll keep my eyes open, so and so. And then somebody else said, oh, on my Yahoo group, I saw that somebody said they found this cat. And so these two people connected, and the, the pet and the owner were reunited. And I think that, I do think there's, there isn't one solution. I think mm -hmm. there are many, many, many ways to sort of connect the dots here. In, in Powderhorn, we had one set of lost tortoise. But we also had one post that said a lost husband. And uh, this, this husband was very involved in community activities. And he left his Blackberry or something somewhere. He went off to go get it. And he wasn't home at 3 in the morning when his wife woke up. And she posted to the forum. And within minutes, you know, call your wife. So when he was at a party. <laughs> Richard, yeah. <laughs> My name is Richard. I moved to Mercer Island from Minneapolis just this summer. Um, I'm a data analyst by trade, but I'm going to looking to go to school for civil engineering and urban planning. So I'm here just to learn and support my friend Corinne who invited me. Great. Um, I read the Seattle chapter of Neighborhooder on the top of the platform. It's not really community involvement, but it's local stories about so say it again, Seattle, what, it's the, it's the Tumblr Neighborhooder? Neighborhooder, it's a Tumblr site, and they have a okay. chapter for uh -huh. major city pretty much. Not neighborhoods though. So that's a new one to me, so that's great. Please. Well, my name is Lizzie Evans, and I'm the uh, CEO, founder, and chairman of the Enterprise. So this is my this is my latest gig. I have several. I'm also the founder and executive director of Urban Financial Services Coalition, which is a chapter that I brought into Seattle about five years ago. And what I do basically is the Enterprise. I provide space for youth programs, entrepreneur workshops, and any type of uh, programs that help the youth in the neighborhood. Lately, here just recently, we formed a team in um, the 98112, I call it the 98112 zip code area, which is down in Madison Valley. We formed a, a team to go out into the 98122 Central District area, 
to add some youth to that will qualify for our intern programs, scholarship programs, and financial education programs. So you can learn more about the enterprises. I have this too good video that mm -hmm. my boyfriend recorded. It actually made it through the next 50 project and it's posted on the website. You can come also down to the Seattle Center, October 17th, Seattle International Film Festival, and I'll be there and you'll see Lizzie too good. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Now we're going we're to enter a speed, a speed round now. So for the, last, the folks, we're going to just finish up as quickly as we can. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm Daniel Smith. Um, and uh, Lizzie gave a good introduction now. I'm part of uh, Central District Youth of Purpose, which is the internship program. It's a leadership program that teaches uh, the urban youth uh, to becoming uh, corporate professionals. Um, and so we're here to learn more about social media, to teach them networking, and how to uh, build those networks. networks. Excellent. Please. Hi, um, my name is Carrie Wong. I'm the Chinese Information and Service Center. I'm the Computer Center coordinator there. I'm here to uh, learn about online neighborhood and to explore the possibility of uh, build one uh, within the Chinese community. We had a, a, a quick conversation ahead of time about how they do Facebook training. Now that Facebook, and as well as Google, requires a phone number to verify when you have a household that shares a cell phone, suddenly it's not so easy. Or when the phone is a landline, you know, not near the training center, you know, the ability to verify an account. So uh, just a little nugget of, of, of a new barrier that I hadn't really thought about or heard about recently. So please, right, finish up. Uh, <clears throat> My name is Jack Becker. I'm, I'm uh, here with this conference that some folks have been talking about. i uh, from Dayton, Ohio, uh, originally from Denver, Colorado. I work with the Kettering Foundation in Dayton, which is a research institute that looks at uh, basically how citizens and communities are uh, taking hold of the issues in their community and strengthening democracy uh, from the ground up. Uh, and so I kind of come at this workshop with that lens. I'm, I'm interested in how uh, and listening for, for what it sounds like everyone is doing for how uh, online tools can potentially work to strengthen community politics. Great. Please. Thank you. Um, hi, my, I'm Sana Adel. Yeah. I'm the Kettering Foundation as well. And I have actually two questions. One on demographic. Demographic question. The yep. age factor. Is there an age factor for uh, people that are active online? Mm -hmm. And another one on demographic. demographics. Are these people who are active online, are those who are more civically engaged on the ground too, mm -hmm. who respond to, for example, these neighborhood initiatives or not? Mm -hmm. Another question is that, yeah, it goes to this collective action and political side of these. Mm -hmm. These are all, I understand, that are social mm -hmm. ties mm -hmm. and, and connectedness is important, the first step toward collective action, but I want to hear more about some of the stories that people yep. come together and decide and then I Great. I'm Vicki Yuki and I'm with the City of Seattle Department of Information Technology and the Outreach and Education Coordinator with um, Community Technology Programs, which David um, you know, described really, really well for me, so I'm not going to, to do that in the speed round. But I recently moved to Bellevue from West Seattle, and with West Seattle blog, I spoiled. And so I'm always really interested in how, how people build community. It's what I do in, in my work in Spago. And so I'm trying to see if they, I'm sure they have something over there too, but we're in a small neighborhood. That's so anyway, I'm just uh, you know, really happy to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, one of the reasons we did this and spent all this time is that it, it just confirms that the intelligence is in the network. Right, it's the network, and you know whatever we say to in, 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 in the presentation here, the most valuable thing we hope that we can come away from this is the ability for to ping somebody else in your own community about how you better connect, you know, your neighborhoods or different groups.